Believe and act. 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 We first learn about the power of God's work back at creation. Repeatedly God spoke his will into existence. Amen? We know that in Genesis, God said, let there be light. And what happened? There was light. I'm talking about how God spoke with God kind of faith. You may say to me, but Apostle Sandra, that's God. No, God gave you the power and the authority to speak to the mountain and that mountain would move. Now I'm here to explain to you how you're going to get that God kind of faith that when you speak to that mountain, it's going to get cast into the sea and you're going to begin to believe it in your heart without any doubt and that mountain that you've got in front of you is going to be cast into the sea and you're going to get your desired result. Amen. 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 God said, let the waters beneath the sky flow together into one place so dry ground may appear. What happened? It happened. Amen. God spoke a lot of things. I can give you pages and pages of scriptures of the things that God spoke and called things into existence. He called the world into existence. He called the light. He called the stars. He called everything into existence by the spoken word. God spoke and the world became. Amen? Amen? God spoke and the world became. God created and evoked change through his spoken word. He had no doubt that what his words, the words that he produced, he had no doubt that they would accomplish what he set them out to do. And that was exactly the scripture in Isaiah 55. His word accomplishes exactly what he says it will accomplish. And they do not return to him void. But you have a part to play with your God kind of faith. Amen? I'm trying to get you to elevate your faith into particular circumstances in your life, whether it's healing, whether it's deliverance, whether it's bad relationship, whether, whether it's finance, lack, poverty, whatever that is. I'm trying to help you elevate that God kind of faith from within you so you can get to a place to receive your desired result of healing, deliverance, prosperity, and restoration. Amen? Amen. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Come on. I don't, I, 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 we got to awaken here tonight. This is good news. When Jesus spoke to the fig tree, he was doing what he had seen his father do. Amen? Amen. He was doing what he saw his father do. He used his God kind of faith to speak to the fig tree. And it did the desired result as we continue. Amen? Amen? And what do we do? If Jesus did what he saw his father do, we are imitators of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So then we do what we see or what we hear, what we read in the word, Jesus do. We do the exact same thing. We don't step out. We don't step around. Amen? Amen. We've got all kinds of craziness going on out there. And there's a lot of stuff that I see out there that I never saw or heard Jesus do. Amen? we got a lot of religious chaos going on. And, and a lot of churches are out of order. They're out of order. They think it's the Holy Ghost. It's not the Holy Ghost. It's holy demons. Come on now. That's it. The Word of God says that Jesus only did what he saw his Father do. We are imitators. We are ambassadors. We are vessels of Jesus Christ. We carry the same spirit inside of us that raised Jesus from the dead. We do exactly as we see, hear, or read Jesus did. We don't step to the left and we don't step to the right. Amen. Yes, Holy Ghost is doing some, some amazing things in the same time hour. So get ready because he's pouring out his spirit. But there's still a lot of stuff that is craziness that is going on out there. And you need to know the word of God to know yes. exactly what you are dealing with. Because as the Holy Spirit is coming in this end time dispensation. And he's going to do some miraculous things. And the healing and deliverance, healings, miracles are going to increase. Because the word of God says this is the end time hour. And I am coming with my spirit. I'm going to pour him out. But so is the devil. The devil's coming even as a, as a, as a spirit of light. And he's going to 
in, in, be in, an imitator of Jesus and the Holy Spirit too. So yeah. you have to understand exactly what you're dealing with when you get out there. Amen. Amen? Amen. There is a battle raging and we are in it. Church, we are in it. That's why we need the God kind of faith. We need the God kind of faith to move the mountains in this end time hour. We are in an end time hour. Amen? Number two, how God's faith works. Notice Jesus spoke to the tree saying, may no one ever eat that fruit again. Jesus wasn't speaking about the tree. He was speaking to the tree. Amen. Amen. He was speaking to the tree and he was telling the tree what to do. Do you know you have the authority to tell the demon what to do? Yes. Do you know that you have the authority to call those things that are not as though they are? Do you know that you have the authority to start claiming your family back unto you? Do you know that you have the authority to live in the riches of his glory even though you've got $5 in your bank account? Speak to the mountain. Speak to the mountain. And believe it in your heart. And have no doubt. And it will be given to you. That's what my Bible says. Amen. Amen? He didn't wait until the circumstances or outward situation changed. And agreed with his words. Jesus didn't wait there for the fig tree to shrivel up and die. No, he kept moving. He spoke, had the God kind of faith, believed and kept moving. He acted, he kept moving, trusting. He trusted the word that he spoke with the God kind of faith that he released into that tree. He trusted it to do what he said it would do. And he went about his business. Amen? So the next day, the disciples now are coming back, and they're coming out of Beth Bethany, and they walk by that little fig tree, and they notice that the fig tree is dried up and shriveled up right from the root. From the roots. The tree can only die from the roots. Amen? The roots have to dry up for the tree to die. There's another teaching in that. We're not going to get into that one today because we got to go right to the heart of the matter, even in deliverance. We got to go right to the roots in deliverance. That's a very that's a teaching in itself, Pastor. That's a teaching in itself right there for deliverance. We got to get to the heart of the matter, the roots. So Jesus spoke, and the roots dried up and shriveled up, and the disciples were amazed. Amen. Amen. The disciples were amazed. See, so he didn't wait for something to happen. He just went about his business. And it happened the next day when they walked by. It didn't happen right then, instantly. It didn't happen as they were walking away from it the day before. When they walked back the next day, they saw it. Which means sometimes your healing will manifest. Sometimes it doesn't manifest right away. Or your deliverance. Sometimes... It will happen. The ten leopards, as they went, they were healed. Amen? Amen. But in the interim, you got to release your God kind of faith. And you don't have to see something to happen or, or hear something or smell something. You just go about your business and trust God that the word that you spoke is going to get you your desired result. Yes. Amen? Amen? Because it's in the word. It's God's will. Healing is God's will. Let me give you some things here. We can follow his example by proclaiming what our end results will be, which is based on God's word. The end result is always based on the will of the Father, which is God's word. People say, well, ha, 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 you know, people, the people that don't understand healing, there's still many believers in the body of Christ that do not understand that healing is part of the atonement and it's already yours upon salvation. So many don't understand it. 
But once you can grasp that healing is yours, then you got to stand. According to Isaiah 53, I am healed in Jesus' name. I speak to my body in Jesus' name. I've come here with some pains and aches today. I don't deny the fact that uh, I have aches right now. I'm not denying it, but I do deny the right for it to remain. Amen? Amen? Amen. We can't deny the fact that someone's sick and has got cancer. It is what it is, but we deny the fact if you are a child of God and you've accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we can deny the, the right for that demon to stay. That Amen. spirit of sickness has to bow to the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. We need provision? Go to Philippians 4.19 and start uh, proclaiming your provision. Peace, Philippians 4, 7. You see, this is all the will of God. So you get into that God kind of faith and you can start decreeing and declaring the word of God and you will get your desired result. Because the word of God says that you will. Believe it in your heart and you will get it, says the word. Jesus said it. If Jesus said it, I believe it and that settles it. Amen? Amen. Amen? That's good news. Come on! Amen. That is good news. All the answers. All the answers are in the word. But you gotta kick it up a notch. You gotta kick it up. Some of you gotta kick it up a few notches. Amen. Some of you have been battered and beaten and put back to the ground. When you got to know that you've got the faith of God. Now the faith in God. Now let, let, let's talk about that a little bit. The faith in God. I have faith in God that tomorrow it's either going to rain or snow or the sun is going to shine. Amen? I have faith in God that that chair, if it's all put together, I'm going to sit on it and it's going gonna, it's gonna to hold me. Amen? But faith of God is different. When I'm going and I'm praying over you, or you've got something you're contending with, you're gonna you're gonna grasp the faith of God, and you're gonna rise up, and you're gonna start speaking, and that that what what you speak is gonna be catapulted by that faith of God that's gonna back you up, and you're gonna get your desired result. Amen. 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 I'm not. I, I don't hear any enthusiasm here. Amen. I'm not hearing anything. How many of you know, if you've come in here sick today, you, you're going to get healed. Do you know that? Yeah. Because God, if you're a child of God, God God's word says that, that he's bought already your healing, your deliverance. But your faith of God has got to rise up so you can receive it. Amen. You know, I am so, I am so, I'll, I'll just say I've had enough. Of, 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 of hearing that the devil made me do it. No! No! The devil doesn't make you do anything unless you've given him that door and for him to walk right in. There you go. Amen. Come on! Amen. The devil doesn't make you do anything. You've got to subdue the flesh. Speak to your flesh. Even that. Speak. Yes. Speak to your flesh. If you're battling addictions, you got to speak to that flesh. Amen. Come on. And even just this week, let me give you a little testimony, because even this week, I used, to, I used to, I'm no longer, but I battled with an addiction. It was a silent addiction nobody would ever know, with bulimia and anorexia for 30 years. It's no different than drugs or alcohol, my friends. It is no different. It's an addiction. And it took my life over 30 years. I would be throwing up every single day, three to four times a day. Or I would starve myself and get down to 90 pounds or 80 pounds. It was either one or the other or mix and mingle. Those are demons. And when I understood about deliverance, I got delivered from all of that. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus, where he said, Jesus, who is our deliverer, to set the captives free. Amen? That thing wanted to kill me. I should be dead 30 years. I should have no teeth, and they're pretty white. Amen. My stomach 
it should be rotten. I'm giving you this example because just the other day, you know, there's a, I, you know, we got so much going on, and and you see, the devil will send in those familiar spirits. So that familiar spirit, you know, the devil knows your weaknesses. You see, he knows your weaknesses. So even just last week, did I share this at the, our prayer command center on Thursday night? I said, guys, uh, continue to pray for me because I felt a heaviness coming on me again. I felt that spirit of bulimia coming on me again. I can feel the heaviness. I can feel when I go see the cookies and the, I've got no shame. That's why I'm sharing. Okay? I have no shame because Christ Jesus took my shame. Hallelujah. I'm sharing the testimony because there are many people that are, that are addicted to things that are addicted, but what I'm saying is we gotta subdue the flesh because you see, the devil doesn't make you do anything. The devil's not gonna make me go eat a pack of cookies and then go throw up in the toilet, amen? I have to subdue my flesh. I gotta get back into the realm of the God kind of faith and I have to take a hold of the word of God where the, who, who the, the son has set free is free indeed. And I have been set free. So I have to come against those devils that are trying to take over my mind again. I have to do it. But if I allow that devil to come in, it's me that allows it. I have to be responsible. I have to take ownership of that. So that weakness, that the enemy will come in of those things that, that, that he knew we were weak on. So if you've been set free from some kind of addiction, my friends, what I'm telling you is subdue your flesh, get into the realm of the God kind of faith, and you will get your desired result because the Son has already set you free. Amen. 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 That's just an example. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. So we